What's going on guys? Welcome back to Carrasco Ranch. My name is Robert if you're new here. So in this video we're going to talk about mock scrapes and uh, basically how to place them, where to place them, and where to look for them if you're looking for them naturally. If you are trying to do this um, intentionally, trying to create a place where the deer will stop, pause, maybe give you a shot with a bow or whatever. We're going to talk about that today. I'm going to show you one that I just found. Um, we're going to talk about the low lining areas which are really good places to put mock scrapes. So I'm going to walk around and I'm going to show you one of the, my, my uh, mock scrapes, one of my scrapes. It's not a mock scrape because it is a naturally occurring scrape. I did not do this one. Um, and also, if you're new to mock scrapes and uh, you want to get an idea of what they look like, what do real scrapes look like, this will give you a good idea. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you. All right, guys. So this is what a real scrape looks like. I have not tampered with this scrape. This is the deer and the deer only doing this. And these are some of the branches they have broken off. And what's what's really interesting about this place is that it's really low lining. I'll give you a kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. It's really green, low lining water tends to collect in this area and it runs through. And there, as you can see, there's a trail running through the, uh, the brush there. And I just set up that camera when I found out about this scrape because I wanted to see what was coming through here. So the camera's been there about two days since I found this cam this uh, scrape here. Yeah, so like I said, guys, that camera's been there about two days since I found that scrape. And real quickly, we're just going to break down this scrape. Um, again, this is a naturally occurring scrape. I didn't do a mock scrape on this. And so first thing we're going to notice is that there's a trail. There's a trail that runs alongside that scrape. Next thing you're going to notice is that the scrape is right off that trail. Um, most scrapes that I have found, they're usually less than a yard or about a yard. A yard's about three feet um, from a highly traveled trail. And not only bucks will use these scrapes, but also does. Does, I've, I've caught does, you know, rubbing their, their scent glands on their face. Bucks as well. Bucks, if a twig is broken, it's more than likely a buck. I mean, a doe could break the twig, but that's why I put that camera there because I wanted to see what the heck was passing through here. Um, so yeah, again, so... Usually less than a yard from the trail, and there's usually going to be an overhanging tree um, just, you know, right above eye level, right around eye level of that of the deer. And what the deer do is they usually will leave their scent from their face, their scent glands on their face, on these branches and twigs. The next thing we're going to notice about this is that it's in a very secluded area. It's an area that we, I personally don't spend a lot of time in here. It's also fairly wooded as you can tell but it's still open enough where the deer can travel through fairly easily and it's still covered enough where the deer feel comfortable and safe traveling through here. Now I know specifically here for Texas um, possibly for you guys up possibly for you guys up north as well excuse me I just had to burp um, another thing you're going to notice is that it's dead of the winter here in South Texas everything around this area is dry and dead Basically, all the vegetation is dead. But if you look behind me, it's nice and green. Well, that's actually clover. And clover has a lot of protein, um, naturally occurring for the most part. Again, it depends on your soils as well. Um, but this, the clover here has a lot of naturally occurring uh, protein. And I'll turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about here. So all this is clover. There's a little bit of grasses um, in, mixed in with this. And... This is not a food plot. This isn't clover I planted. This is naturally occurring clover. So we're already past the peak time of the rut. And excuse my hands, I was changing out the oil on some things. But um, uh, we're past the peak time of the rut. So the bucks right now, they're actually, um, I found some does the other day. They were here eating um, in this area because this is one of the few areas that has greenery and vegetation in and around the area. So um, after the rut, the deer are going to focus mainly on food sources, trying to build back up what they lost during that rut, as well as for the does, because they were being pressured and chased around for, you know, a couple weeks. So another thing you're going to notice is that I'm standing pretty much in the valley, in the valley. Um, as you can see right up there, kind of slopes up and in front of me, which you can't see, but it's kind of slopes up as well. So this is kind of a valley and a travel corridor for deer. So if you have any valleys or any um, dense wooded areas that have enough opening where deer can travel through 
easily with a fair amount of ease and it still has enough cover where they'll feel safe that'd be an excellent place to place a mock scrape and focus on the branches and twigs so there's some here um, and overhanging and right below is the uh, the scrape if you guys want to see me put together a mock scrape which I am going to be doing here in the spring uh, definitely let me know down in the comments I will definitely do that for you guys I'll show you how to do it um, it's pretty simple uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought um, just you know just kind of observing what the deer are really naturally doing and just kind of mimic that as much as possible um, without further ado guys I do appreciate y'all watching and definitely stay tuned um, we're getting closer to some predator hunting so definitely stay tuned if you want to see that and I am doing a giveaway of a knife set once we hit 200 subscribers so definitely stay tuned for that we'll see you later be careful be good take care and god bless